Hey guys and welcome back to the second episode of the series where we're going to be recreating all the plants from Plants vs Zombies. I'll have this website in the description and it's great because it has all the plants from the game so you can easily just find the plant that we need and then right click save image as. Once you've saved the image just drag and drop it into Blender like so and you can close Chrome. Again we can center it with Alt G and Alt R. And now we just remove the location and rotation and let's just rotate it by 90 degrees around the x-axis and move it back so it's not in the way. Let's go into side view and start modeling. We start with a circle and just extrude it up. So add a circle. I like something around eight vertices because we're gonna use a subsurf. Just click control two, which adds a subsurf with two levels. Or you can of course just manually do it by going to the modifier tab, add modifier and subdivision surface. So let's go back into front view. So you can either just click the gizmo up here or click one on your numpad. And in edit mode, you're just gonna select everything and move it down. Of course, we wanna scale it down and then let's fill the face with F and extrude it up. I like to have one loop cut in the middle and just scale that up a bit to make it more cartoonish. And let's move this bottom edge loop down. Our next step is to add the support loop. So with control R, you can just hover over one of these lines and click and then drag down until it's relatively sharp. And let's do the same thing for the bottom face. So go here or click just three. And then you're gonna select faces instead of vertices or edges. Let's just inset this with I. Then we'll have this nice defined rounded corner. I'm also gonna shade smooth by just right clicking shade smooth and then add another loop cut for the top. Like for the bottom, I'm also gonna inset this face just a bit so it's not as sharp. If you want to change how sharp these edges are, you can just have GG and move these loop cuts around. What the difference is between G, which as you can see, just moves this line without actually affecting the size of it. GG actually changes the scale. So as you can see, it's not distorting this line here as it's always staying straight. But now if I use just G once and move it down, you can see that you get this corner here. So I'm just gonna move it down a bit so we have smoother corner. And let's start with this head part now. So in the same object, I'm just gonna add a UV sphere and set these segments to something around six and then eight. You always want to have half as many rings as segments so that you have square faces. And in front view, we can just select all of the bottom vertices. What you'll see is that you also select the ones from the stem. Select one of the vertices from the stem and tap Control L, which selects everything that's physically linked to this vertex. And then we can just hide that and now delete these vertices. You can, of course, unhide it with Alt H and select this top shell with Control L again and just make sure you don't have any of these vertices selected or else you'll select both. So this would happen. So just select one, control L, and now we can position it. So move it down, scale it a bit. But what you'll see is that the shell is actually hollow. So what we'll do is select this whole edge loop. Of course, go into edge select mode and alt click on this edge loop. Once you have the loop selected, just search with F3 for grid fill and it's just gonna fill everything in. And what we can do now is select this middle vertex. To see it, you might have to go into wireframe view. And then what we can do is enable proportional editing so we can move more of it around. But as you'll see, it also moved the stem. So I'm just gonna check connected only so that it only moves all the vertices that are connected. And I'm just gonna move it up a bit. What you'll see is that the stem is shaded smooth and the top isn't. To fix this, just re-click Shade Smooth so that it recalculates everything. What we can do now is add the mouth. So just go here and we can either add a new circle or just select this bottom one here and duplicate it. And then in wireframe, we can just position it. Oh, let me just disable proportional editing. Position it here and then rotate it 90 degrees. Um, let's just put it here and then just extrude it and extrude the scale a bit until you have this shape. And then with this face selected, just inset it with I again and extrude it back a bit. 
Cool, that's already basically the whole shape done. One last thing I want to do is just turn this head part a bit so that you can see more of the face. So I'm just going to select that by, and I can select the whole thing by just getting one of the vertices and clicking Control L. Or what you can do is with nothing selected, just hover over it and just tap L. That does exactly the same thing. What we'll do is just go here and tap RR, which basically allows you to just spin it around itself. So I'm just going to tap that and just move it a bit like this so that more of the face is exposed. And inside view, you'll see that it's slightly too small and too high. So I'm just going to reposition it like that. And I think that's looking good. I'm just going to make it slightly thicker like this. There we go. There, that's looking good. Just gonna. You probably want to do some final tweaks, so feel free to do that now. Now that we're done with the modeling, I'm just gonna make sure to have the object selected and go to UV editing. Now you'll see that if we select everything, it's not UV unwrapped yet. So let's just have view, smart UV project, and increase this margin by one or two clicks and just press OK. And it's just going to do an automatic UV projection. And for this case, it's perfectly fine. But if you want to maximize your quality, you might want to do this manually, but that gets kind of tedious. One thing you might want to do is just take this button again so that even if you don't select everything, it still shows up and the selections are linked between your UV editing and your 3D viewport. I'm just going to make a new image texture and call this puff shroom base color and set the quality to 2048 by 2048. So that's 2K. I'm going to press OK. What we can do now is go to shading and add a new material. And here I'm just going to add the image texture and connect this color output to the base color. Click on this drop down and select the image we just created. So of shroom base color. In texture painting, we can now see that the object has the color of the background. Before we get started, I prefer to work in the viewport shading mode because the colors are just much more accurate. So just click that here or just with a Z, you can go to material preview. And what we're gonna do now is just fill everything with this greenish color and then we'll draw on the dots on the head and the eyes. So just go here and select the bucket tool. So click on that. And on here, you just select the eyedropper or just hover over the color and tap E, like I showed you in the last video. I'm just gonna sample one of these colors and we can just fill everything by clicking on the UV editor. I think this is slightly too bright, so I'm just gonna take it down a bit and try again. Now that we have that, I'm going to use the draw tool and select this purple color. So E and then just sample one of these. And what we can do now is just paint over all the areas here that are supposed to be purple. So that's all the head parts. And to change the brush size, you just tap F and then just drag until you have the right size. And then you just left click to, to confirm. But what you'll notice is if we click right now, you have a soft fall off. So to change that, you just go here on the right panel to fall off, change it from custom to constant, and then we can start painting. So I'm just going to select that one. I think this one is probably also it. So we'll see. Yep. We just want to make sure that we don't accidentally draw on other parts. So here you can see I drew on this circle. So I just want to undo that and be a bit more careful. So just draw like this. There we go. And just see is this. Yeah, that's part of it. This is part of it. Uh, these part of it. Yep. And what about this? No. Nope. So we can't draw on this. Not on these either. Yep. So I'm just going to fill these in. Cool, so now that we've finished that, I'm going to select this darker purple, again with the eyedropper, and then 
What we can do now is without changing anything, just click in the 3D viewport and have these circles on it. Like in the last video, make sure you don't do this from an angle or else you'll get weird distortion. So just from head on, just click and with F again, change the size. So just make a couple different sizes. Cool, so there we go. That's it for these dots. And now we just need to do the eyes. So I'll go into front view. And this time I actually don't want this harsh fall off and change it to sphere. And one more thing that we want to do is first of all, change the color. It's still this purple. So let's just change that to black. And I also want to have it mirrored because right now if I paint, it's only on this side. So as we can see, we want to mirror it from one side of the Y axis to the other. So under symmetry, I'm just gonna check Y. And now if we have a dot, it looks like an actual eye. I'm just gonna retry that a bit smaller. So something like that, maybe a bit lower. For the eyes, because on the reference image, you can't really see where they are. You just need a bit of trial and error and see the different sizes. There we go, I think that's good. And now we're already done with the texture painting. So I'm just gonna go through the shading to do the final tweaks. I think I'm gonna decrease the roughness a bit. So I'm, I think 0.4 or maybe even 0.35. Yeah, 0.35 looks good. The last step is just to add the outline. So like in the last video, I'm just gonna use the outline helper and just click add outline. It's a great add-on. If you don't know how to get it, I show you all the steps in the first video of the series. I'm gonna have a link to that in the description with the timestamp. And I think something like 0.07 works perfectly fine. And that's it. And if you want to, you can do some final tweaks like move this down a bit or scale it up. I hope you enjoyed. See ya.